Hi everyone, thank you very much for joining this online shopping in the Philippines webinar for the Jose Rizal Memorial State University. Thank you very much for this opportunity and for the graduate class. I know that Sundays uh, is not an easy schedule for you. This is a big sacrifice for you to complete your program. So I very much appreciate your time. When uh, when Professor G talked to me about uh, doing this session for you and to talk about online shopping in the Philippines, the premise also given to me was you're currently working on your thesis or looking at a topic uh, or for a potential thesis topic for you. So I thought of designing this webinar session in a way that we can talk about the basics of online shopping, at the same time look at the current trends and uh, look at some of the online shopping sites Earlier today, there was a problem with the fiber internet here in Manila, especially with the PLDT. So I'm glad that it has improved a bit. So I hope that uh, I'll be able to show to you some sites later on. And then I'm also going to share to you some advice on how you can uh, help your participation in terms of uh, making uh, online shopping a common activity in the country. So for those of you attending this webinar for the first time, my name is Jana Toral. I've been in the e-commerce industry since 1997 with the Philippine Internet Commerce Society. And um, I'm also teaching uh, an e-commerce uh, program. So we have a lot of free e-commerce uh, topics or lessons that you can access online. All you need to do is visit digitalfilipino.com. We have more than 40 uh, free courses that you can access, and we also have more than 400 lessons that you can access online. So we prepared this uh, resource material so that professors, teachers, uh, community advocates uh, who are helping MSMEs get on board and do e-commerce, we hope that these resources will be of great use for them. Uh, two years ago, I also partnered with a school called the Asian Institute of E-Commerce or AIE College, which is currently the only school in the Philippines that has a Bachelor of Science in E-Commerce. I partnered with them to create a special course, uh, which is the Certified E-Commerce Specialist, Entrepreneur and Professional Program. Uh, we're currently ongoing. I transformed the program into a mentoring program because I realized that um, each student uh, goes through their own uh, pace, no? especially with, uh, with so many dependencies in so far as completing their projects are concerned. So currently, we have around eight students taking the program. Although in the past, we have graduated around uh, less than 20 students. It's a tedious program because uh, we require a lot of outputs no? from our students. Uh, but we hope that... Uh, at, that we are able to produce also quality students that are not just there just to prepare plans, but get graded for their output. So my topic for this one hour webinar session will focus on online shopping 101 and top online shopping sites in the Philippines. I'm going to touch on a few shopping sites in the Philippines, and I'm also going to show to you some of the websites that came out from some of our student projects to give you some sort of an inspiration because of course, for MSMEs outside of Metro Manila and especially in main cities and even outside of the key cities outside of Metro Manila, sometimes they often perceive that e-commerce is only for big players, but actually e-commerce can, can be a vital channel for small and medium enterprises, particularly the micro and small medium enterprises. And then we're also gonna talk about why Filipinos buy online. When we talk about online shopping in this context, we're talking about you going to a web, going to the web or going to a mobile app and purchase something online, whether it's in the form of products or services. Now, how big is uh, e-commerce today? Currently, uh, we, are, we are estimated as a country to have around 60 million internet users. And it is already pegged that half of them are already shopping online. So this presents a huge opportunity for Filipino micro and small medium enterprises to tap this as a channel in terms of selling your products and services online. And, uh, and a lot of them are active on social media. And we have to admit that by default, a lot of people communicate via Facebook. That is why a lot of our 
small entrepreneurs are really using that as a channel, especially among startups, to reach out to their target market since it is a channel that they can use for free. But but there are so many options out there that you can use no, or that you can extend your presence in terms of selling your products and services online. From a perspective of a student, more often than not, especially since you are in a graduate class, we are often tasked not just to look at the present, but to look at what could possibly be out there or how can we prepare for things to come. And if you are looking for your potential area, perhaps the challenge for you is to also think about how can you, how can technology uh, help MSMEs in your area? What what is reachable to them at the moment? What is your current ecosystem that will enable your MSMEs uh, to embrace e-commerce? So let's uh, touch briefly some e-commerce statistics or some stats that are related to e-commerce. In a recent research article published by the Business World Online, uh, they noted that household spending makes up 60% of our country's gross domestic product. In another article by Ken Research, it is estimated that the express delivery market will reach 915 million US dollars by 2020. Um, in the past, what is what was observed when, when you look at the growth of e-commerce in the Philippines, the first surge came from online classified sites like OLX, IUS Dito, and then all of a sudden, we went through the piece of deal site where the airline industry became very competitive and embraced the internet, particularly with the likes of Cebu Pacific offering piece of deals and the airline, other airlines as well becoming competitive with their offerings. And then there was a time also when deal sites became popular. That's why you had Metro Deal, Cash Cash Pinoy, Deal Grocer, and the likes uh, sprung out. I'm sure some of you have tried purchasing from those uh, platforms. And then we also saw uh, the rise of payment systems and payment options. And this year, uh, we're seeing a lot of uh, courier services, express delivery services coming out, primarily extending this to the e-commerce market or to the e-commerce players or to the online seller community. So this is considered as a... Uh, how they call it, as one of the hot points right now for e-commerce and we're, where, we're, where we are seeing a lot of investments uh, happening this year. So in your case, when you look at your community or your area and when you look at its viability in so far as e-commerce is concerned, apart from the existing existence of uh, major players like LBC, Air21, To Go, and the likes, you also look at the availability of your local players who can partner with the major players to serve these requirements? Um, because more often than not, even if you want, even if an even if an MSME in these areas, in far flung areas in the country, would like to join and participate in the e-commerce market, sometimes the challenge is there's no available courier who can pick up the who can pick up the items from the MSME and put it in a nearby warehouse where. Uh, the products and sir, the products can be sorted, be properly packaged, and delivered to the customer, which is what which is what most marketplaces do. Um, and sometimes also, the ability to render cash on delivery services cannot be done by the couriers, and there's no local courier who can be outsourced to to do such uh, activity. So, but because of the opportunities now happening in this space, uh, we're expecting that the career market, the delivery market will further improve and and will get connected and become part of a, of a stronger ecosystem for the logistics community. Philippine e-commerce, according to Google and Temasek, is expected to reach a 9.4 billion by 2025 at a compounded annual growth rate of 34%. Now, another thing that we have to think about is uh, the importance of mobile. For those of us who have started using the internet in the late 90s, more it is likely that our connection to the internet started with the desktop or maybe with the laptop. But you have a growing generation, a young generation, who started using the internet perhaps 10 years ago or 14 years ago, who grew up with, um, with mobile phones and tablets. So the new surge of online buyers are so comfortable in using these devices 
in getting their jobs or getting their work done. And at the same time, in looking for information and in shopping for products and services online. Now, when you look at the uh, when you look at the online shopping ecosystem, according to e-commerce uh, IQ, which is a sister company of e-commerce, if I'm not mistaken, and in this case, uh, the graph was further improved by uh, Business World uh, Research. There are many e-commerce platforms out there today, from marketplaces to niche markets. And then you also have the peer-to-peer -peer or the person-to-person -person markets. And usually the peer-to-peer -peer markets is where we see the classifieds, the, the property portals, the car portals, and the likes, where the buyer and the seller communicate with each other directly. And then you also now have more payment systems than ever before, and you now have more logistics providers offering different types of services. So what I would like to do at this point is um, show to you some samples of, uh, of the websites, but instead of just showing to you screenshots, let's look at the actual websites uh, themselves. No? For example, the top uh, online shopping site in the Philippines is considered to be Lazada. Uh, two years ago, their annual uh, sales reached up to 2 billion pesos already. So, so you can just imagine the volume of uh, sales that platforms like Lazada have. You can just imagine that they're processing more or less maybe around five to 10,000 orders a day uh, from different buyers. So that reflects uh, the kind of activity that we already have in the Philippines. No? And, um, and one thing that makes uh, Lazada interesting is that they have regular promotions. They also have a streamlined onboarding system for merchants, training platform for merchants. And they also remind, they also have regular promotions that engages the merchants and, and encourage them to come up with special promotions that can also work with them. No? Um, so that once they re release all of these promos, the, the offerings of the merchants can also be included. Usually the most awaited activity for a lot of the merchants is the 11-11 or the November 11 and the December 12 because, because that that is time with the Christmas season where a lot of the great offers uh, also comes out. So like, like what I'm showing you right now, I think they are having a sale that will start on July 11. And as you can see, there's already a countdown reminder and where they are announcing a lot of stuff from the sale that they'll be offering, the mystery gift that they'll be providing, all-time best sellers that can be available. And as you can see, Brands like Samsung, Olay, Tresemme, L'Oreal, Bosch, Cherry Mobile, Maybelline, Pampers, Dove, uh, SKK Mobile, Nido, and the likes are already gearing up. And all the brand categories, all the merchants in the brand categories are, are gearing up with their offerings as well. It is estimated that the platform has around uh, 7,000 merchants. And... Um, and a growing chunk of them are MSMEs or micro and small uh, medium enterprises. Of course, uh, Lazada is very popular in the B2C market, but one market that we also cannot ignore is the growing popularity of the C2C market. And in the C2C market, one of the top players today is considered to be Shopee. And uh, what makes Shopee interesting is that you don't have to be an, a registered business to be able to sell on Shopee. And for the online sellers, if I if I got it correctly, they're also paying out three times a week. And as you can see here, they're even offering free shipping for shops uh, and for nationwide, free shipping and COD nationwide for their merchants. So meaning when their merchants sell products online and uh, for more than 250 pesos in this case, then the the buyer will be able to avail of free shipping and can also pay cash on delivery. Uh, definitely, cash on delivery plays an important role in so far as the growth of e-commerce in the country. Uh, a lot of people, even if they have credit card or even if they can do bank transfer, the moment they learn that COD is available and they see themselves available in being able to receive the package or uncertain whether the package that, that is about, uh, the package about to arrive is trustworthy or not. Uh, depending if the merchant is a first-time seller or maybe the merchant is an entity where they're buying from for the first time, maybe they want to pay COD so that they can see it first. No? And in those situations, uh, cash on delivery is uh, very attractive. 
Uh, what we noticed though is that uh, since Shopee is more like a hub, more like a portal of uh, hobby site, uh, hobbyists or hobby sellers, where sellers who are for, who are formerly with Multiply, who have tried selling on Facebook and Instagram, have also extended their presence on Shopee to be able to avail of the free shipping and uh, COD services. So it's a very price conscious market. So some of the products that will typically easily sell well on the Sada may not necessarily sell well on Shopee because of the nature of the market. And um, maybe because it is also P2P in a sense or peer-to-peer or person-to-person, uh, the trust level, the risk that you would like to take in terms of buying from a person and not a registered business maybe up to a certain amount only. For example, if you're buying a gadget, maybe you would like to buy from a known brand and avail of your warranty, especially if the gadget is up to 5,000 pesos and up or 3,000 pesos and up. But maybe you might be willing to buy a gadget also from an individual and trust whatever warranty that person is offering to you if the amount may be less than 2,000 pesos. So that is also the reason why there's limitation on the kind of products that are being availed of by people uh, shopping in uh, platforms like this one. Of course, there are the clothing platforms are also popular, the fashion platforms. And in the Philippines, it is noted that platforms like Zalora is uh, doing well. Uh, although I think the challenge for Zalora is that uh, being able to get as many, at least in my observation, uh, being able to get more merchants to come in, especially for uh, fashion items that are that are normally high price and people might be willing to invest on it. For example, I had an experience uh, last year where I got invited to become one of the godmothers in a wedding. No? And uh, I remember trying to shop around with inside Lazada or inside uh, Zalora for two days, trying to find the right color and, and to check whether it will be delivered on time. But I ended up going to the mall and visit Karimadon because, you know, um, right there and there, you can just pick, pick the dress, fit it, and then take it out. No? Uh, maybe if uh, Karimadon is available online, um, and available through uh, Zalora, I might have uh, tried it. But but then I also realized that even if you have picked your size, let's say you are a size XL or a double XL or sorry size large, the size does not necessarily uh, remain consistent for the different types of dresses and for the different type of fit. So I guess that's the reason why there are there are certain clothes that you can buy online, but there are clothes that you really have to go there and, and fit before you purchase. Uh, but definitely uh, Zalora is also one of the popular shopping platforms online. And I think what I also like about Zalora is that similar to Lazada, they also have affiliate programs. So you see a lot of bloggers promoting Lazada and Zalora because they give commissions uh, to people who are able to refer sales to them. And then for Zalora, what makes it more interesting is that they also have a brand ambassador program. So let's say I'm a brand ambassador. If I invite you to shop on Zalora, I'll give you a coupon code that you can use so that you will be able to avail of a 15% discount on your purchase. And then on my end, I will receive a commission for that. So they have a lot of engagement activities that 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 where the platform does not rely on advertising or on its own social media promotion, but they also empower others by giving them opportunities to earn, uh, to also promote in their behalf. Another e-commerce platform that uh, that is interesting in a way because uh, they don't necessarily have their own products, uh, but what they do instead is that they are they carry products, but the products that they're carrying are those that are not available within the Philippines. No? So Gallium.ph actually carries a lot of products that can be found on platforms like Amazon. And instead of you ordering from Amazon and wait for the products to come to the Philippines, what will happen is that you can order them via Gallium, and then Gallium will take care of everything and it will just arrive at your doorstep. So... So in a sense that you're buying it from them and then they buy it from the they buy it from the other platforms and then they, they take care of everything. You know? So 
So that what that is what makes uh, Galleon unique. You buy products that are not in the Philippines. All right. Now, of course, e-commerce is not only limited to big players. No? We are now seeing the growth of e-commerce and uh, online shopping platforms outside of Metro Manila. Uh, for example, uh, one of my students in the Certified E-Commerce Specialist, Entrepreneur, and Professional Program created a website called uh, Tara Sa Baguio. And in Tara Sa Baguio, you can actually uh, order products that are typically available from Baguio, from woodworks to um, to Ube Jam, among others, and have it delivered to you. No? And then, apart from Tara Sa Baguio, the owner also has a presence on Lazada. So as a bonus for the merchants that they were able to get on board with them, the products can not only be purchased directly from Tara Sa Baguio, but it can also be purchased uh, from Lazada, therefore increasing the potential market of the merchants uh, joining the platform. Another example of an of an e-commerce uh, marketplace is uh, one of my mentees. Although the owner of this site, uh, Mar Ian Donaldo, is not one was not one of my students. No, he's not uh, a student of mine. He actually uh, studied with the Founders Institute, but uh, he recently approached me and asked for help because he noticed that all of my campaigns, all of my programs, are working directly with the micro and small and medium enterprises and uh, felt that uh, he can benefit from uh, being mentored in terms of uh, helping him out with this project. So what I like about shoplocal.ph is that it's a combination of an online store, but they also have a physical store. No? So the physical store is where the products are showcased. No? They partnered with the uh, van uh, Van Depp store, the, the the very popular Van Depp pastel. I'm not, I'm sure you're very familiar with it, especially for those of you who are from uh, the Pitan City. Um, you're quite familiar with that product. So the objective of Shop Local is to work with um, local brands, especially Mindanao brands, the special delicacy brands, and put them online, uh, make them available in different shops that they have. And then um, and and offer this to the public. No, I think the challenge with um, products like this, delicacies, it also has that element of perishability. Therefore, MSMEs who have been producing local delicacies but have not taken care of their packaging are the ones that are limited in terms of uh, selling their products online. I remember one time receiving a message from an entrepreneur who manufactures homemade otap and then and and took a picture of it and showed to me and said that if his or her product can be sold online. And I told her that it is possible, but he or she has to improve the packaging because the probability that the whole otap will be, ano yun, uh, nadurog na, how do you say the durog? Basta parang na, ano na siya, um, get pounded and lost its original form, no? Um, might happen, no? Because of uh, because of how products here get transported. So definitely packaging is uh, very important, no? Um, there is another e-commerce initiative that I would like to show. I forgot to load it. But uh, let me load that. But while waiting, so apart from Shop Local, another uh, Shop Local is actually owned by Mar Ian Donaldo, and he is based in Cagayan de Oro City. And another online store in Cagayan de Oro City that caught my attention, and I've known the owner for for quite some time already. The owner is actually based in the U.S. And build a team in in Cagayan de Oro to run this website called Bulaklak.com. Of course, when Bulaklak.com started, it was really intended to become to be a flowers marketplace. Uh, but today, you can actually order harana, yung, you, you, if you want to be serenaded. And then they also have gift packages like chocolate basket, food basket, lechon baboy, stuffed toys, and other. Uh, uh, by occasion uh, products. And then I believe they are also working with other local merchants to also create a delicacies marketplace. Although I'm not sure if that marketplace is already up, but I'm showing this to you just to um, 
just to show that you have e-commerce services that that are not necessarily marketplaces in nature, but are doing their own share in terms of marketing their products and services online and having their own uh, uh, market, no, or having their own customer base. Of course, the original, uh, considered to be one of the, the original uh, flower stores online in the country is Island Rose. And uh, actually, uh, I got the chance to try Island Rose in terms of sending gifts to friends, sending flowers to friends, especially when congratulating them for special occasions. And uh, Island Rose, uh, actually, what makes Island Rose different is that in instead of them partnering with flower uh, establishments, you know, those flower arrangers, uh, they have a farm, they have a rose farm. So more, they grow their own uh, flowers, roses, and the like. So that makes them very competitive with their offerings. They are able to control the quality and they can also offer uh, special rates or special promotions for customers who have uh, who would like to avail of buy one, take one, among other promotions. Uh, the government also has its own initiatives no, uh, of uh, helping MSMEs to sell their products and services online. One of them is the project of the Department of Science and Technology called uh, One Store, onestore.ph. So if you are a DOST-assisted uh, MSME, then you will be able to have your products listed on one store. If you are not a DOST-assisted MSME, but you would like your products to be listed here, you just have to apply and then DOST will check your product out and if it would qualify to be supported by DOST. The nice thing about DOST is that they really, uh, they really make sure that your permits are complete, your your, the quality of your product meets uh, standards that they believe uh, should be followed. And uh, they, also, uh, they also have physical outlets. So the products of the MSME are, does not necessarily have to be sold exclusively online alone, but they also have physical establishments where the products can also be uh, showcased. So especially if you're a fanatic of special rice, like red rice, black rice, uh, aromatic brown rice, uh, sardines from Surigao, or, you know, special decor uh, made by the local entrepreneurs. They even have uh, farming equipment and uh, other goods and services. So you might want to check out uh, the DOST uh, project called onestore.ph, okay? So we check out one store. We've seen uh, Shop Local and Bulaklak.com from Cagayan de Oro. We also got the chance to check out Tara sa Baguio from Baguio City. And then there are also uh, establishments that are not just limited to physical, physical products for retail, but you can also hire them to, to render special services for you. No? For example, you have Alfax Printing Services. Uh, if you check out alfaxprinting.com, you can actually order business cards, uh, tarps, flyers. I actually order business cards from them. I also order flyers and tarpaulins from time to time. And uh, they will also be launching a, a, a packaging site very soon. So you can also order uh, boxes online. So, so uh, there's a growing number of uh, Filipino online buyers who are getting confused who are comfortable in offering those type of requirements already online. Okay, um, and there are also specialty or niche markets. For example, uh, Mami Mundo of uh, Janice uh, Villanueva. Actually, it's a very interesting community. Mami Mundo is one of the pioneer uh, mommy communities in the Philippines, and they have a marketplace called the Mami Mundo Shop. And inside the Mami Mundo shop, uh, you will you will find her uh, selling uh, mommy related stuff and baby related stuff online. And then what makes her interesting also is that she has a passport program because uh, Mami Mundo is not just a portal selling products online. They also have their own expo events. They also have their own seminars. So if you buy the passport, 
uh, what will happen is that you will be able to get free entrance on the Mami Mundo events. They also have a planner that they release every year, so they give that planner to the moms. And then they also have a, a journey box. So the moment you buy or the moment you order the passport, you will also be able to get a journey box. So the journey box is similar to the uh, beauty boxes. Diba? Right now, you see a lot of people selling beauty boxes or organic boxes. You know, that you, you, that box will be containing like beauty stuff, kikai stuff, or what have you. So the Mami Mundo uh, box contains uh, special items that are uh, fitted for the mom, depending on what journey uh, she is in. And the products comes from uh, different brands uh, or sponsors of uh, Mami Mundo. So these products can be for uh, someone who is expecting or someone who has, uh, who maybe have kids already among others. And then when you open the box, it will have uh, special items inside. And they give that for free for everyone who's renewing their Mami Mundo card. So I think that's, you can see um, online sellers becoming very creative with their approach. And I think the reason why boxes are very popular is that you can you can put in items at sampler sizes. And then if the, if the customer or the person who received the box wants to know or wants to have one of the items in the box and try it again and maybe uh, get a bigger size then that's the time they go to the online store and purchase it okay so what else do we have okay so i would like to also share um last uh, last year i started working with the dti cebu to train uh e msmes for 12 days and develop their capability to do e-commerce and digital marketing and the 12-day program includes having them create their own uh, simple uh, e-commerce website using WordPress and then run a 21-day digital marketing campaign. Uh, the idea there is that we are teaching them how to build their own website because most of the time, even if they want to sell online, the marketplaces are not able to accommodate them or they find the requirements of the marketplaces to be somehow tedious. Therefore, um, we want to teach them how to build their own and operate it. No? So one of them last year, one of the top performers, batch one, uh, top, I think the batch one for their 21-day digital marketing campaign was able to have uh, a combined sale of uh, combined sales of 300,000 pesos. So some of them included uh, Argao Delicacies by Chitang Storta Bakery. So basically this, uh, this establishment sells up uh, peanut brittle, broas, uh, torta, which is the popular uh, mamon in Argao. At first, I don't know what uh, torta was about until I found out that torta is actually mamon. But this one is spiked with uh, tuba or lambanog, if I recall correctly. And then it has raisins and cheese. And then they sell it by, by the box. No? So this is an example of an MSME uh, selling online. So... When they participated in the program and ran a digital marketing campaign for 21 days, which happened last December of 2016, he was able to generate around 50,000 pesos worth of sales coming from online. Uh, especially most of the orders were generated through their Facebook page. Another MSME that we encountered in Argao is Arela Organics, but this lady is selling uh, soap. Although today, when you visit her website, he's, she's also trying out uh, other related uh, products no and what i noticed is that uh, the owner used her online presence to look for distributors of her products and i think in a week or two you will also be able to see arela organics in lazada one of my students in the certified e-commerce program is assisting her so that her products can be uh, also sold on lazada and then another MSME uh, who also developed a project. Unfortunately, he joined the program, I think, on the last two weeks already. And then he did a trial of the, pro of the project called Mommy Buddy. Uh, the guy, the owner of the site is a daddy. And 
reflecting on his experience as a daddy where you have to go out because you have to buy diapers, milk, or any special stuff for the baby. So that became his inspiration to come up with Mommy Body because at first, when he joined the program, he was trying to, he was working on his shoe business, uh, shoe manufacturing business. But since he is required to produce an output, he cannot, he cannot use the shoe manufacturing business as an example. So he decided to create Mommy Body and run a campaign. And because of the success that he was able to attain during the trial, he he took a pause and went through the entire business registration process. So now they they are they are fully registered. They just set up an office and they are currently uh, looking getting merchants, and they should be launching in a month or two uh, with a slew of merchants. Uh, ready to be included in the mommy body uh, service. But of course, people who would like to avail of some of the products that are available on the website can already uh, purchase. So this one is from Cebu. No? And then uh, for batch two, uh, we had students from Dumaguete, Cebu, and uh, Bohol. So one of our students from Dumaguete actually created this website called Subida Souvenirs. Subida Souvenirs in Dumaguete is actually a, a physical souvenir store and at the same time a tourist information center. I have that backpack and that backpack is actually very nice. I was also able to buy a casing, which is a toy top. The bamboo phone amplifier can give the popular bamboo phone amplifier brand out there uh, a great competition or run for their money. And they also have um, a lot of uh, souvenir stuff, no? And other miniature items. But of course, they work with uh, a lot of the on local manufacturers, local craftsmen in developing products that can be sold through Subida Souvenirs. And I think that's what I really like, no? And then, by the way, if you will get the chance to visit the Facebook page of uh, Subida Souvenirs, you will also notice that they've created uh, interesting uh, video stories, like how the bamboo phone amplifier was made by one of the craftsmen, uh, how to use the bamboo coin bank and transform your bamboo coin bank from a coin bank to a vase later on. So they're very, the owner is very creative in his marketing approach, and I think that's the reason why uh, the site is doing well. For example, the Subida Native Pack, uh, the one, I think the one that I have has the purp, not this color, but a different purp, different color. But because of the popularity of the backpack, he started experimenting with the colors. He has a rainbow color, the tamarau black color, uh, and others. And to the point that uh, people really visit his shop just to order that, uh, that very nice uh, backpack. Another MSME that uh, this one is from Bohol, and you can see that she create her 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 main product is uh, wooden jewelry, so necklace, uh, earrings made from wood, and then she also has uh, souvenir items uh, made from wood, no, that are uh, that can serve as popular giveaways, and then I think. When she did her 21-day digital marketing campaign, it's not the jewelries that click uh, for the, during the, her entire marketing uh, blitz, but what click were the wooden giveaways, no? I think like this one, no? uh, I think that's very nice. And I guess that's the reason why a lot of people inquired for, for these type of uh, giveaways. And then, um, of course, Online shopping is not necessarily limited to souvenir items, but you can also purchase uh, travel bookings. So I think one of our one of our best performers in batch two is South Cebu Tours. Uh, they are a sister company of Hap, sister website of Happy Wanderer. But for Happy Wanderer, most of their visitors are already people who are in Cebu. So South Cebu Tours focuses on people who are not who are not yet in Cebu, meaning maybe they are foreigners who are who are planning their travel itinerary, and before coming to the Philippines, they book everything online. So that's the primary market of uh, South Cebu Tours, 
and they're known for their uh, project suri suroi, the canyoneering, and the, the whole the whole shebang, including uh, getting to see whale sharks and the likes. And I think uh, because I loaded the website already, but uh, the moment you get to visit the website, you will be able to fire it will fire up a video that you can or load a video that you can watch. And the video really tells a lot of interesting stuff to the point that even if you haven't thought of traveling yet, it, it will encourage you and would like you to think about Cebu the next time you want to travel. I mean, I've been to Cebu so many times, but I must admit, uh, after after encountering the team of uh, South Cebu Tours during the training and build their website and their ideas and explaining how this package uh, works, I must admit that I'm, I already put it in my list of the things that I want to do uh, either this year or next year, no? and said that I would also include it in one of our uh, events and offer it as an option for people who would like to avail it. No? Uh, who do we have here? Okay. Okay, we have Chrysander. Ah, it seems I was not able to... Okay, I wasn't able to load that one. All right, another one. Uh, one of our students in Cebu also is a printer. So as you can see here, uh, she's selling printing services. And I think what makes printing services interesting is that even if you're not from that area, since it is online already, you can order it. So actually, the owner of this site used to live in Mandaluyong and then moved to Cebu, um, particularly in Mandawe, if I recall correctly. And then... Um, as she operated this business, she gets orders from different parts of the country who, does, who doesn't really care where she is based as long as uh, she can deliver uh, the products and services uh, that she is offering. No? So actually, it's, a, it's also a husband and wife uh, team uh, working on the, on the business. And then I think one of the interesting case studies that I encountered also for for batch two is that we encountered this entrepreneur from Moal Boal uh, selling agricultural products, bangus fingerlings, uh, bani may, shrimps, and the likes. And when she when and then when I was asking her, how can they buy from you because you cannot ship this because you're based in Moal Boal. And then uh, she told me that actually those who are really interested to buy will go to Moal Boal to get them. And then, uh, in fact, it, it's it's true, no? So when she was marketing this online, she really got calls from people who would like to avail of the Bangus Finger links. So for the 21-day digital marketing campaign, she got three calls and three pickups of uh, from people who would, who bought. Uh, fingerlings and other agricultural products or all of these, uh, some of the fishery products that she's selling and that she promoted through her website. Although the website that Emirich uh, did here was very simple using the default template, but I think for buyers in this category, what's more important for them is to really feel that you are real, you have a business, uh, that people can really check out your products. And I think for sectors that I think if career providers will also mature and and be able to serve this segment, I think there's a lot of potential there. No, although you know I'm supposed to have a client uh, where our project should have started last month, it was delayed a bit, and then I found out it was further delayed because of the martial law in Mindanao, in Mindanao because the 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 product creator requires uh, seaweeds as a primary ingredient in the products that they are manufacturing. And according to him, it's very hard now to get seaweeds uh, from Mindanao, from Sambuanga, among others, because of everything that is happening right now. No, and It's very tight. Uh, I think it's very strict, the movement from IDs, among others, to the point that uh, he has to stop production until everything is settled. And then I think the last one that I would like to show is also from from uh, Bohol, and this one is actually selling uh, raffia. So raffia is a, it's like a fabric, a red loom fabric that is uh, used for tablecloth, um, for bags and the likes. And uh, during the stage of the campaign, uh, she was able to get inquiries. I think the pictures really impacted also, no? the the positioning of the 
of uh, Tubigon Rafia, which is a community of uh, women uh, producing all of this craft. And, uh, but they were able to get also a lot of orders online. I think they got three or four orders for Rafia as a result of their online campaign. So because of the growth of internet users in the country and the growth of number of online buyers and sellers in the country, the point there is no matter what products or services you are selling, if you are able to market them properly and uh, communicate clearly your message and be able to reach out to your target audience, there is a possibility that the kind of customer that you would like to get will be able to reach you. Or, of course, with the premise that you are able to reach out to them as well. No? Now, some, some trivia also. Uh, this one, I saw this online from Lazada based on 2015 uh, survey. I think MSMEs really have to work on developing their brands because most of the time when people search for products, they are familiar with the brands that they like. So if they haven't worked on their brand yet, they should really develop an identity for their brand so that the moment there are other sellers carrying products that are similar to what they're selling, their brand will allow them to stand out. No? So like in this example, uh, most popular brands search based on different age groups according to Lazada, but of course this was in 2015. But as you can see, the young people were more hippie with their brand of choice from Pons, Nike, Asus, and Apple. And then the 35 to 54, uh, maybe looking for more anti-aging products <laughs> and, uh, and maybe uh, be more uh, frugal with the, bad, with the gadgets of their choice. No? And then as you can see also, um, based on gender, Depending on the requirements, I guess women are more open also in looking for personal products that they can purchase online. And, and as you can see here, it depends on the location. Sometimes the, the availability of the products in those areas will also affect what people will buy online. So if those products are not that available uh, in those areas, then it is likely that they will order them online. So let's go to the last part of the presentation, which is all about why Filipinos buy online. Now, of course, there are practical answers to that, reflecting on our own experiences. But more often than not, people will say that it's all about ease and convenience because the product gets delivered to you. And then if you want something, you can order it now so you don't have to go outside to get it, especially with the kind of traffic that we are experiencing in in key cities in the country today, and that is not limited to Metro Manila. Even Cebu and Davao, I heard, is already experiencing traffic. And uh, more often than not, the you can even buy something online that is cheaper from stores. And even if you find that some of the products online are a little bit expensive compared to buying them from physical stores, the the time that you spend, the transportation that the transportation costs that you will be able to save. Uh, will still be enough or will still be worth it to pay that extra price just to get that product delivered to you instead. And of course, the deals. I think I think our challenge is that we got spoiled by the major brands or we got spoiled by the major portals like Lazada always offering some stuff on sale and offering all of this stuff on COD or free delivery. And as a result, uh, we got tempted by them, and that's also a challenge for the entrepreneurs because uh, for those who are selling their products and wares online, if they're not used to the idea of offering uh, free shipping, then they have to rethink about uh, their product costing, among others, whether they'll be able to catch on the wave and offer deals of that nature. And of course, a lot of people also regard uh, online purchasing as fun, especially if they are if they get the chance to order products from China or from from far flung places rather than their local places, so they realize also that hey, this is uh, this can be worth uh, buying. No? And then in another survey, nine out of ten uh, Filipinos prefer shopping online, and I think the the young ones no, are getting how they call that sharp as well in terms of realizing that they need to do some checks before they shop online. 
So some of the considerations based on research as to what people check out before they buy online includes uh, cons checking the security of the payment facility. People now check also how fast can the transaction be finished, how fast can the products be delivered. Uh, people now also check reviews. What do people say about your products online? And depending on the quality of the product or the category where the product is in, they also check ethical reasons like do you practice fair trade principles? Are you environment friendly? And, you know, you have a good cause. I mean, you're not known for doing anything illegal to the point that uh, you, you have good PR, you know. They know that you have a lot of activities, you help out other people, therefore uh, they see also the good cause and why, why they should patronize you. Um, and I think before I end this presentation, I also would like to highlight some of the things that we also discovered in our e-commerce maturity scorecard inside uh, iMetrics Asia Pacific Corporation. And I think definitely we could say that the search in social media has a big influence on the actual purchase uh, decision of people today, you know, and to the point that a lot of people are are really uh, citing that uh, that the internet has has a big influence to their purchase. So moving forward, so I I encourage you to become part of the ecosystem. You can come inside this ecosystem by by either becoming a seller, a supplier. If you're a seller, then you can you can be a merchant. Now, if you don't want to become a merchant, but you'd like to become a supplier instead, that is also possible by working with merchants out there. If you want to venture into the logistics business, there's still room for this. I mean, there's so much stuff that needs to be delivered. <laughs> I think the problem right now is the availability of courier, or even if there's courier, a super system that can organize the couriers. And that is why there is that. Uh, there's that project idea of creating a super portal for uh, couriers. It's, an, it's in, the, in the discussion, so it's just a matter of time before something uh, comes up. It's just a matter of who will develop it first. You can also come in as a service provider, either a website developer, perhaps uh, uh, a strategist for companies, or maybe you can be the digital marketing arm for companies. You can also be a skills enabler if your role is to more of to train people to get into the e-commerce business. So some examples uh, like the DTI Cebu in partnership with Region 7 came up with their own e-commerce and digital marketing mentoring program for MSME. Some of the websites that I've shown you earlier were actually outputs of the program. Uh, we were able to graduate two batches already and we will have one batch more to go. But my problem with this type of projects is that it's law of addition at work. Because when you train someone, you're just empowering someone. Uh, but that's why I'm excited with the DICT project, which is the Rural Impact Sourcing uh, Technical Training, the 12-day training program that I've developed and, and offered to DTI Cebu. It's now going to be offered by DICT. And what DICT is doing is that they'll be inviting uh, trainees from, from different parts of the country because this will be rolled out in 27 areas, including the Pitan City. So watch out for that. And I won't be surprised if, uh, if I won't be surprised if uh, San Jose Memorial will be the area because they usually uh, do the trainings at Tech for Ed centers or at Negocio centers. No? And this is in partnership with the DTI and the LGU. So each of the trainee will be partnered with an MSME where they will go through the modules from branding, developing the website, taking the photos, content writing, CRM and email follow through, in integrating the policies like the refund policy, privacy policy and the likes, doing SEO, social media marketing, business blogging, uh, the, creation, the creation and the implementation of a 21-day campaign and the training, creating their own uh, freelancer File. So I think the Pitan City will be scheduled sometime in November or October, and but there are other areas that are on schedule as well. For Metro Manila, only Quezon City is the one scheduled, but the participants for Quezon City are are uh, how do you call it? Yung ano yun nakalabas na sa rehab, di ba? Remember there was the whole Tokhang movement and 
and and some people that were caught were rehabilitated. So I think after rehabilitation, they will be trained. So the Quezon City government decided that they will be the audience for the training for the for this rural impact sourcing program. So uh, that's going to be scheduled soon, and I'm I'm excited to uh, to see how is that going to happen. And I think for me, this is there's the potential of having the law of uh, explosive growth applied here because if 27 cities with 10 trainers, uh, 20 to 30 participants per location, then that means 30 MSMEs. Then there's a possibility that we will have 500 to 700 MSMEs having their own online presence, selling online, uh, created before the end of the year, uh, coming out from this program. Uh, for the DTI part, we're expecting that with the training of the Negotiation Center Counselors for Region 7 and more Negotiation Center Counselors this coming uh, third batch, we're also expecting them to do their own trainings next year. Uh, and that will pave the way for more people to be trained and see them, uh, see the MSMEs uh, sell online. Okay, so I'm curious, would you like to learn more about uh, e-commerce and online shopping? If you would like to learn to learn more, kindly press that raise your hand button. If you would like to learn more. Okay, so for those of you who would like to learn more, uh, you can visit our website. We have free e-commerce and digital marketing learning programs that you can access for free. As I mentioned earlier, we have more than 40 programs that you can access online. Uh, we have uh, courses like uh, e-commerce project planning, uh, MSME e-commerce activation program. We also have an e-commerce developer course, uh, an, an e-commerce payment course, e-commerce content planning course, among others that you can uh, access. And then we also have uh, digital marketing training modules from SEO to social media marketing, uh, all available for free. So all you have to do is to click on them and we have more than 400 lessons that you can access online. And then, um, of course, developing your skills is one thing, but developing your character is another. Uh, what I notice is that for some of our students who were not able to complete the program, it's not a skills problem, but it's more of a maturity problem, especially when they encounter disappointments or challenges in their projects. And that's the reason why I also signed up as a John Maxwell certified uh, team member uh, and also why I, I joined the Fascinate Certified Advisor program so that I can teach my students more about branding and influencer marketing so this coming july 12 we have a free webinar on everyone communicates view connect which is a title of a john maxwell book which is all about connecting with people so if you're interested to attend that's free you can uh, send me a private message on facebook if you want to learn more about it although i will share you a link where you can also find that uh, I was not able to reveal to you some stats that we have in the e-commerce intensity index. Uh, but if you want to learn more about that, we have a free webinar on July 24 at 10 o'clock in the morning. This is the e-commerce monthly monitor where we present an updated e-commerce intensity index and, a, and updated e-commerce maturity scorecard. So if you would like to... Um, Attend that and learn about it. That will be on July 24 at 10 o'clock in the morning. And uh, for those of you who would like to really roll up your sleeves and, uh, and really learn more, we have a Facebook page and content marketing 101 on July 14. That's on Friday from 12 to 2 p.m. It's a two-hour training. Um, but this one, though, it has a fee. It's uh, $5. If I believe that's uh, 250 pesos. So after attending the online training, you get access to the video and then you'll be able to download uh, the handout as well. So if you would like to learn more about it or you would like to participate and support the advocacy programs that we have, you can become a patron by checking out uh, patreon.com slash janetoral. Okay. So if you want to learn more and access the materials, just go online at uh, bit.ly slash ecomlearn or you can also access patreon.com slash janet All right. So thank you very much.